day should be. And it's Jay Stan. And welcome back to In Retrospect Podcast. We look beyond the surface to find understanding. Bring you laughs, knowledge, and culture. So sit back, relax, and join the convo. So today we're uh, joined by a lot of guests. Introduce themselves and what they do have going on. Uh, hey, my name's Raquel. I'm from Charleston, and I'm a creative. Yeah, Fred. Um, in law enforcement, got a couple degrees. Um, pretty laid back, chill, simple. All right, and I'm Carlton. I'm from Stanton, South Carolina. Um, I'm an ISS teacher, football coach, track coach. Um, all around, go get it. All right. Thank y'all for joining us um, today. We look forward to seeing your perspectives on the questions we have. So the first segment is let's unpack this. Well, we, you guys send in your questions or we look at what's happening in the news. Recently, um, there has been an uproar in the city of Atlanta because there's going to be a new facility being built. Yep a $90 million training ground in the forest to practice urban warfare tactics. Activists are calling the cop city and say it will harm black people in the environment. The facility would be a space where the police could practice tear gas, explosion, bomb testing, have a shooting range, practice high speed chases. Like they're literally gonna build a mock city of Atlanta to practice different urban warfare tactics. The purpose of this project is to be able to better surveil, better suppress, um, and better prevent liberation movements that directly address the exploitation that Black and working class communities are feeling. Atlanta actually increased its police budget after Black Lives Matter protests and the movement to defund the police. More than 70% of Atlantans disapprove of Cop City. In 2021, Atlanta's population was almost 50% Black. 20% of Atlantans live in poverty. The Atlanta police have always been antagonistic towards poor and working class people. They have been active agents of gentrification. Cop City is proposed to be built on land that included a slave plantation and a prison farm. The construction would cut down part of the South River Forest, which helps prevent flooding and protects against extreme heat. Activists against Cop City are occupying the forest, building barricades, and protesting against corporate sponsors to stop construction. Defund the police, abolish them, and invest in the things that actually keep us safe. We've been ramping up our efforts to get folks in the community trained on things like restorative justice, on medic trainings, on de-escalation tactics, disaster relief, all the things that we know actually keep us safe when we're in crisis. And so we don't need to call the police. Folks won't feel like they need to engage 911 that will have those skills in our community and can meet our own needs. Um, I was interested to hear Fred's comment since I know you work in law enforcement. Like, do you think that this is something that could be beneficial? Depending on how they do it, um, it could be like, I mean, Atlanta is different from South Carolina and like every department is different, but able to do like car chases and stuff. Um, I mean, I guess if like the stats that they're pulling, if that tells them that, hey, like maybe they've gotten into 20 car pursuits within one month and like eight of them ended in like a collision with the cop car, then maybe that might be something they want to replicate. I mean, I don't know how safe that would be, honestly, regardless, because I mean, that it just doesn't sound too practical, but um, there could be some benefit to it. I mean, maybe they're building it so that way they can have outside agencies come in and train and like do different things from like, say like a bomb team or something. If they're like, hey, you know, they got this facility where you can come in and you can do, you know, these type of trainings with like, you know, bombs and explosions and stuff the way it's like at a safe radius where nobody's going to be like exposed to different things. Um, that might be something that they're trying to market with that too. But I mean, that's it sounds like a big facility and that they're trying to put a lot into it. Maybe, I mean, I said like it's probably driven from stats of the riots and like they might still have more stuff going on. Yeah. I, I guess they just want to train and better prepare for that. But I mean, this there can be some positive to it, but I don't, I mean, I feel like it's, it's a stretch a little bit for me. Yeah. I feel like they're adding fuel to the fire because people do a lot of, uh, People show different forms of activism well before they're in the streets, breaking down business glass and setting police cars on fire. And I feel like they're just trying to match energy versus solving the actual issue. And 
I don't know why they would be funding the police even more than they already do. Why do they need military type uh, weapons to simply just, you know, keep people safe? I don't, I don't understand it. But I mean, I, I understand what you're saying when you say uh, don't fund the police. I guess more per se. I guess, but I don't know. Me personally, when people I hear a lot of people say defund the police and you know put money into certain other areas, that's cool. But I would like people to break down where they want these certain areas for this money to go a lot more of the times because okay, you're going to take the money from them, but then where's the money supposed to go? Also, the shelters. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You're giving a very educated. You're giving a very educated answer. I understand that you're giving a very educated answer, but there are some folks out here that are not giving educated answers about where this money will go. They're just saying to fund the police and not giving a background where the money needs to go. I guess I think it's gonna be uh yeah, you know, I tend to go off the rails. But uh yeah, me personally, I feel like uh it'll do more good than bad. Uh it should be, you know, creating more jobs for folks to actually work in the administrative offices uh <laughs> there. Uh yeah, I'm gonna go against the grain. This is how I feel. So more jobs to folks that are basically it's a hard market that like we're living in right now jobs are scarce that'll create more jobs uh the training should be top tier if it's going to be this big compound uh yeah that's what i think but i mean the con is is being built on uh an area that is used the only to forest left in atlanta that's where it's yeah going. that's the con <laughs> for me but not only no. that you said that jobs it's hard to get a job i kind of disagree because a lot of people are losing their well leaving their jobs i should say since the pandemic started but you know what is scarce housing so why isn't that being built but hey i'm not necessarily agreeing with justin in reference to it being more being doing more good than bad um i think we kind of sort of like started talking about it uh before we started but like what was the reason for this facility to be built? Like, why do they feel like it's a perp? Like, what changed prior to and what's going on now for them to feel like this is a necessity? Um, you know, it's like, what's the reason? Like, I'm just curious as to, like, what mindset they had in order to be like, hey, this is something that we need to do, and this is how it's going to improve. And then what's the improvements that they plan on seeing now that this facility is here? Like, how do they plan on implementing the things that they learn? Like, what actually happens in Atlanta for the things that they're going to be training on to be needed? Like, a whole training facility to be needed for it. Like, when would they actually be using the stuff that they're learning? During protests. Because it said they want to improve urban, uh, how they handle urban warfare. So, what would you need a training facility that size? Yeah. During a protest that's normally peaceful. What you about to be doing out here? The mayor. Knocking um, on doors. Telling people to uh, quiet down. <laughs> well, you can learn how to do that in somebody's neighborhood. You don't need to do that. The mayor and the governor said that they want this to build police morale and to improve fighting crime. That's that's what they both said. And also, they have not spoken about it since agreeing to have it built. So it's team building for them. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, essentially, that's exactly that's exactly what's going on. Team building. Yeah. Uh, Carlton, what are your thoughts? Uh, I'm in. I'm neutral. I'm in. I'm right in the middle. Uh, I feel I, I can kind of see where you're saying like it's it's needed for training for, for training and where Fred's coming for. Uh, where maybe there are smaller areas or maybe areas that are developing that might need. Uh, space to train and, and better their officers but then at the same time like it's like uh i, I just don't i just don't like see what they need for like like overkill. yeah like they just said they could be they're building a whole city for cops to come and tear up they could put they could build a whole city for the homeless that are down there in atlanta up under the bridge and sleeping on peach tree and everything like that so um that's that's how i feel about it so i'm, I'm a little bit in neutral i can't really, really agree with or disagree do we think that um, this kind of feeds into environmental racism, meaning that they're taking away trees, which you need for oxygen, but also when I was reading more into the story, right? So the area that they're building it at is like 75% black. And within that area, there's a lot of poverty and a lot of health issues such as asthma. So if you're taking away trees, 
obviously that's going to impact somebody who has breathing challenges. But also, not only that, shade. Atlanta was hot this last summer. <laughs> it was disrespectfully hot. So, like, I'm not even trying to joke. I'm just saying, like, it, oh, it may seem small. I'm really not. It may okay. seem small, but certain things start to add up and impact people that may not be able, like, they're not hearing them. They, they, they hear the words, but they're not listening. And that type of thing would not happen in Alpharetta or Marietta or any of these other areas that are predominantly white. Not in my opinion, it wouldn't. I know we did have some folks say that, you know, felt like, agreed that it was a little bit too much over excessive for them to build this huge compound. Um, I was just curious to know, like, I know we did mention some places where the money could go. We said the homeless, uh, we said in the education and the schools. Um, why is it that that isn't the first thing that comes to, uh, you know, the administrative folks that are in administrative positions minds when it comes to allocate money into things? I wouldn't say it's not the first thing that comes to their mind. It probably is. They probably know this is where it should go. However, that doesn't benefit them as a whole. That doesn't benefit the things that they stand for. So I, I feel like at the end of the day, no matter what comes out of a person's mouth, their focus or their main focus is themselves. What's going to benefit me the most? Like, I'm going to be a good friend because I want you to be a good friend to me. I'm going to go to work because I want to get paid. So, yeah, I might be doing the characteristics of something that's good, but it doesn't benefit them. So I want to say that they don't think about the fact that it should go to education or homelessness. They ain't worried about it. That's not beneficial to them. Agree. And to keep going on that, what's beneficial for the state or for those that are invested in something like this will be like the fact that the prison system will pay more to take care of an inmate than they will for a student in the education system. So the penitentiary system, they're training officers to lock more people up faster and faster and faster. And then, I mean, hey, they're putting more money in their pockets on the back end and they're not worrying about the education of the kids. If you, so if you go and start putting that money into the education, eventually you're going to start having people doing the right thing, not being criminals. And then that's when, and then you're back on the uphill climb, not on the down. Let's not forget about the creative prison pipeline. Like we don't got to go detail or deep into it, but if I'm not putting money into education, that means they are not getting as educated, which means they are more likely to be in these prisons that Carlton just referred to. Right. Everybody had really great points on that. And I hope that, they figure out some type of compromise where police can get the necessary training that they need, but then also they're taking care of the community as well. Um, so sharp left turn <laughs> in the news, <laughs> in the news and social media, um, we constantly see other podcasts or shows that highlight relationships um, from like the Real Housewives shows to Love and Hip Hops to now crazy in love with Krishan, rock and blue face, Lord. Um, and so in the topic of just relationships in general, I want to know, have any of you ever experienced a healthy relationship with the gender that you date? Yeah. My name is Justin and I, I have had a healthy relationship with the, don't do that, Raquel. Don't do that. Don't do that. Leave me be. <laughs> and a healthy relationship with the opposite sex. Uh, I try to be proactive about any speed bumps that may come up in mm -hmm. any relationship that I do have with people, whether it be romantic or, you know, uh, not romantic. Uh, but I will say this, all the relationships that I have had, not all of them ended well. The definition of a relationship. Um, I have been in healthy relationships. Well, I don't know. So the more I, the older I get, the more I learn about myself. And so what I know about me is that yeah. I am a suppressor of emotions, um, yeah. which means I'm not going to be as vocal with how I'm feeling, which, uh, so I'm not going to tell you exactly, you know, my thoughts at the moment or in the moment or ever, honestly. Uh, so I like to think that they were healthy relationships, but there were many times where I didn't actually uh, voice how I felt because I'm not comfortable with being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Um, so on the outside, it was healthy. Uh, and they, all of my relationships have ended well. I mean, they've never been like real relationships, but they've all ended well. Like I'm sure I can call all of them like to this day and I'd be good with that conversation. Um, but I want, 
They were healthy adjacent. <laughs> okay. That's a new one. Healthy adjacent? Yeah. We got here making up words like P. Diddy, man. They had the two words, words and I just hyphenated it. <laughs> they had the boo What do you think? <laughs> I've um, had healthy relationships, man. I had both, but I mean, I've had some relationships. Like I said, like they ended well. Um, we were cool. Like we got along, had some, not so much, but I've had it, you know, with the opposite sex. Like it happens. Um, it's just a matter of just like understanding you and them. And then like just honestly picking like the right person because sometimes it's easier just to let go and keep that healthy, you know, relationship versus keep going and hoping that things will change and. You know, it just doesn't turn out well. The next thing you know, y'all can't talk to each other. You don't want to look at each other and stuff. So, see, okay. So, I'm gonna go <laughs> ahead and flip the script on y'all. Um, I actually would like to say that um, you know, like everybody said, oh, we have our healthy, and you know, I think I've had some good ones, but I would like to say like the majority of them probably were unhealthy, just like because of the fact that I grew up with my mother and my father for the majority of my life, for a good majority of my life. They were married, everything like that. My grandmother and grandfather, they were married on, on one side of my family. You know, I saw other, I saw other long-term relationships, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, you know, type of marriages. And then the types of women that I'm dealing with, they don't, they've never seen that, you know, like they even their grandmothers and grandfathers are, are split, or their grandfather was a rolling stone, or their dad's in jail and their mom's out here doing whatever, like. So I I know that they never seen a healthy relationship. You know what I'm saying? Just based on who I'm dealing with, I'm not saying. But so like, I would like to say that like, yeah, I jumped in like, okay, I'm really feeling this person. I'm really involved with this person. I'm really invested in this person. But at the same time, I'm um, trying to have this healthy relationship because of what I've seen off of, off of my experiences. And regardless of the good and bad, I've seen pretty positive relationships. And so trying to emulate that or imitate that. And then trying to have that with somebody that's never seen it. It's, you, it's combative, you know what I'm saying? They are, uh, it can be combative. It's all I like to say that I'm probably more so on the note. I agree with Carlton. I, I feel like the only healthy relationships I've experienced with men thus far in my life have been with my guy friends. I don't feel like I've truly had an overall healthy romantic with just look real uncomfortable. I don't feel like I had an overall. Just look healthy. uncomfortable. Just the hair was itching. No, tell you the truth. Go ahead, Dacia. Um, <laughs> relationship, because I feel like I and I think I attract guys with a lot of mommy issues. Uh, we talk about daddy issues all the time with women, but a lot of these men have mommy issues that are unresolved, and it's something that needs to be worked through because it shows itself and how they communicate or a lack thereof, um, or if they don't know how to be vulnerable, et cetera. So yeah, somebody said something about uh, choosing. So how do y'all feel when people say, well, just choose better. You're, you're choosing the wrong people, change the type. Usually the same people that you are attracted to, you try to change it up, but it usually tends to be the same type of person in a sense. Just a different kind of bot, just a different body. <laughs> you try to be open minded to other yeah. people, but you seem to attract the same type of thing. Yeah, you attract the same type, man. And that happens a lot to a lot of people. Don't laugh at me. I'm all jumbled up in here right now. But but that's because a lot of times people don't change their environment. Like a lot of times, like those same characteristics, those people a lot of times be they'll still go to the same clubs. You know, they'll go out to the club. Oh, I'm looking for I'm not looking for a thug, I'm not looking for a club, but you're in bars, you're in the club, go to a library. Before I walk out the park, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying, like maybe you run into something different there, and then like, then you know some of the physical characteristics I can kind of understand, like you still might get drawn in, like the, some of the stereotypes are true, like you might look at the dreadhead and think he maybe he it doesn't look like he smokes weed and et cetera and et cetera, but why not he won't he why not he does, but again it goes back to that same thing, just to change your environment sometimes people got to change the environment, they keep going out to the club, going to the mall, running to that same type of person, but. Maybe that person is in the computer lab. I don't know. I've tried to <laughs> switch it up, go for somebody who's a little shorter, just be open in general. And when I tell you it's the same result, it's the same result. I And also, I've dated guys who came from single moms. I've dated guys who had both their parents all their life married. Same result. I've had guys who have degrees, 
guys who do not. Same result. So it's like <laughs> the concept of choosing better makes it sound as if there's a plethora of good to choose from when I don't feel like there really is. Not saying that most guys are bad, but I don't feel like there's a plethora of guys out there who know how to be good partners. Justin, you made a lot of faces. Go ahead. My nose is itching. I can't itch my nose. Is that a is that a problem? No, I'm just saying, man. It's all about the person at the end of the day. Uh, yeah, I don't have to that, be you, by the way. Uh, it's all about the person. I know me personally. I will definitely admit that different people bring different sides of me out. Uh, I talk more with some people than others. People, some people be like, it just seems like you don't even want to talk to me, which isn't the case. But I guess I do give that vibe off. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. But it's never that. It just don't. I don't feel inclined to be talkative is what I'm saying. So it's never, it's never that. It's just that certain people, I don't know. I, I already said it, just bring out different things out of me personally. So, yeah, so I can, I can admit, I haven't been the best what partner in the past or at times when it comes to different relationships, whether they be romantic or not. Um, I'm a little, I'm a little awkward. I don't know if you guys have noticed yet, but yeah, that's usually what it is for me. So you never know what you're going to get. You could be by me and I'll be just doing stuff that don't make no sense. But yeah, that's that's all I got for you, Daisha. I mean, I understand completely what you're saying when you're saying that it doesn't matter what somebody may have going on, what they've accomplished. If they're not fully invested in it, then the end results is not going to be what you, they want it to be or whomever they're dealing with wants it to be. I don't know. That I, it's not, I don't know. That well, it's what not I'm saying and by invested, though, is what I'm saying by invested is if you run into <laughs> adversity, you have to push through it or try to resolve it before you move forward instead of get stuck in that adversity and no, 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 no. it crumbles apart. We mean no, no, no. So what I'm trying to say is I don't feel like it's that they have a lack of like of me or love of me. I think what I've learned in these long-term relationships is that I have to date a man who is committed to himself first before he's committed to me. Because I feel like if you're not committed to your own growth and your own purpose, then you can't really pour into me the way that I'm trying to pour into you. Okay. I said, what does time mean to you then? Because like you're saying, you want him to be committed to himself. So that means he's going to be goal oriented. He's going to be focused on what he has to be, be doing. That means you're going to be willing for, um, you're going to have to, the saying is, um, you make time for what he you want to make time for. So that person, what, what does that look like to you then? Because that's what you're, but that, that's basically what that guy's gonna have to do is like, oh, I'm gonna have to make time for you when I have time to make time for you. And yeah. So, okay, I'm gonna try to not be confusing. So, one thing that kind of irks me, I'm gonna just say, oh. or like in TikTok terms, is my ick about dating. People what grind your gears? People tend to look for love regardless of where they are in life. So, for instance, you have a girl or a guy who they don't have a job right now, they're job searching, or they want to move out of their parents' house, but they're out in the scene dating. Do you really need to be, like, are you really in a space to date? No, but what will happen is they'll go out and you start to give this person energy and they would be like, oh, by the way, I'm still looking for a job, but oh, by the way, this is going on. So when I say I need you to be committed to yourself, I'm not saying you have to have yourself all the way together because I don't. I, I mean, we're in our 20s, but in 30s. <laughs> um, but I need to see that you're taking steps towards that. I don't want, I don't, I personally do not want to date somebody who doesn't want to grow. Like, they're just like, that's just how I am. I'm a Scorpio. Sir, no. I Like, I need you to work on how you communicate. I need you to work on being emotionally aware. I was gonna say, um, like just kind of like the first part with choosing and stuff, I've actually like, for whatever reason, I would choose, I guess, the opposite of what like, hey, this person makes me happy, like I get along with them. Nah, I don't see it there. And like, I would choose somebody completely opposite. And then it's like, I'm, you know, poured in and I'm like, you know, all in for them. And I'm like, why is this not working? Because like, you knew this from the beginning, like y'all had personality clashes in the beginning. But um, with the uh, like development and time, just kind of like a curveball of like, okay, like if somebody's developing, like, I know it's like constant that you keep developing, but like, how much are you willing to like give them? Like, is there ever going to be a point where like you're satisfied? Like, 
okay, you worked on your communication skills, but now I need you to work on this too. Like, is it going to be that? Or is it like, like, you're improving. Like, you know, okay, like I can see the difference. Like, I'm good with that. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that if I can see that you're trying, that's enough for me. Again, nobody is perfect and healing is not linear. <laughs> like it's going to be a constant thing that you're working towards, but I just need to see the effort in it. I'm not the one to slide in the DMs. I'm not the one to take my shot and all this other stuff. So I like to be approached. So if I'm being approached and I feel like this isn't what could possibly be my happily ever after, then I kind of sort of like don't give it like the full attention. And I don't know what that looks like for me. Like, how do you know that this isn't it? I don't know. I just feel like there's supposed to be a feeling there, you know, like all those romance novels and, oh, my pulse started racing and my hands started sweating. Like, I feel like I'm supposed to have that moment. And that's how I'll know, because that's the only way I feel like I'm ever going to actually know. Um, so therefore, I won't choose better until Prince Charm be like, yo, I'm charming and I'm trying to be your prince type stuff. You don't think that's over romanticizing love? I'm positive that it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 but at what point does potential run out for whoever you're, you know, you're dealing with? Let's say, for instance, romantically, in this sense. All right, so you want this person ideally to give you all these things. You want them to be said person, do this, that, and the third, and they're not, and they're slowly but progressively showing you who they truly are, right? So when does that grace period run out and it doesn't financially add up what do you mean by that financially add up though i'm curious i mean i mean when you i mean if you're i mean you just play on in general financially doesn't it doesn't add up if you're investing in them i mean whether it's a business or you know you're just trying to take them and show them things that they've never done or seen before whatever like like but at the end of the day when 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 the dollars don't add up man so what would they add to huh like when you say that they don't add up, what would they add to? Like, what does that equate as far as how long you've been with them and what they've given and shown you? Um, I guess, I mean, I guess that all really, that really all determines, depends on like, you know, when you're starting to see those flags and things like that, like, or, cause then, you know, like sometimes you're going to see two steps backwards then you know, three steps forward then you might see one step back and then two more steps back. And so it's, it's kind of like just a gauge, but at the same time, you know, you're still watching, you're still, you're like, okay, I see you doing your thing, like, uh, uh hey, what's going on with this, like, but eventually it's going to all be like, okay, I'm putting all this in that, and like, I'm just, like, no, like, it's not really a dollar amount, but it's more like a scale, like a sliding scale. I think when you start to feel exhausted by that person versus um, recharged, so that right, means right. different for everybody. Right, my bad, Fred, what were you uh, about to say before I cut you off, my fault? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, um, once like it's, it just becomes unpeaceful like you feel like you're in a hostile place it's like at that point you just got to really just take that step back and be like is it worth it because you nobody trying to be dealing with stuff just to come home to deal with more stuff just to leave back to deal with stuff and nah but well, that's why i feel like the financial thing comes can hit entire all of that can, can really wrap into all of that like because that that will cause stress on somebody you know that that will start causing um rather you know tension in the home or tension between somebody like if you're always paying for something or always looking out for them for this or hey, you just kicked out whatever for this or like, you know, so all of those things can really go, but can, can spur from that. But I kind of think still from the financial standpoint, because that's a power move right there. Yeah, I think for me, it's more so about attention. So I'm not like I'm not a very vocal person as to how I feel, but I'm going to like show you it. So like I'm going to like check in on you. I'm going to like make a meal and be like, yo, come grab a plate right quick or I might like be out and about and like, oh, yo, they might like this. Let me grab it right quick. So if I feel like I'm giving you all this attention, mm -hmm. that's I'm expecting that back. And so if I call you and you don't answer, but then I don't get no call back for the rest of the day, or you're supposed to come through and you hit me up three hours later, like rain check, but like no explanation, like stuff like that. Like that's when I've gotten to like the grace period is over. Like we, <laughs> I'm going to start phasing out. Yep, pretty much. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, another thing that keeps popping up on social media in regards to relationships are breakups. And I've noticed <clears throat> a lot of people are overusing the term narcissist. So like anytime they don't like something that somebody does or they're just heartbroken, they're like, he's a narcissist. She's not like, 
it's being overused and misused as well. Um, I think a lot of people don't even know that that's an actual personality disorder. And if you are not licensed <laughs> to be diagnosing someone, you probably shouldn't be saying that they have narcissistic personality disorder. Can you can you break that down for the folks out there before we uh, get into it? Like break narcissist, down. narcissist, oh, and like, what is it? What that all, yeah, like what what is it? What does that entail? Right. So I'm glad you asked, Justin, because I pulled up my handy daddy. DSM-5 from grad school. Okay. So, (laughs) and the DSM-5 is just what you use to diagnose people, different disorders. Anyway, so these are the symptoms for narcissistic personality disorder. So you have a grandiose sense of self-importance. You're preoccupied with fantasies of success, power, brilliance, beauty, ideal love. You believe that you're special. Um, and you have high status, regardless of the, if that's true or not. You require excessive admiration. You are entitled. You are very, um, you exploit your interpersonal relationships. So you take advantage of other people. Basically. It sounds like a lot of people I know. <laughs> you lack <laughs> empathy, right? You're often envious of others, or you think that they're envious of you. And then you can be very arrogant. So that's the like snapshot of what narcissistic personality disorder is. Um, You have to display five or more of those to be considered that. But again, please do not go around diagnosing people with things if you are not licensed to do so. With that being said, Justin, you said, you know, a lot of people that fit that description. Yeah, but you said, but see, at the end, you said if you (laughs) embody such and such or more. How many you said? Five or more or three or more? Five or more. Yeah, five or more to yeah. be exact. Five or more. Uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure most people embody some of those. I don't know if it gets to five. I thought it was three that you were going to say at the end, but you said five. But there are folks, a lot of folks that I do know, including myself, that embody some of those, but I don't reach five. The first one was interesting. You said a grandy, uh, what was it again? Grandy. grandy. Sense, uh, sense of uh, importance. Sense of important. I'm pretty sure everybody, first at some point or another in their life, felt you know they were extremely important, and some people still feel that they're extremely important. Yeah. Grandiose though. That's that's a different level. Hey, hey now. I do feel like I'm important. <laughs> I am. Yeah, listen, I'm listen, not grandiose. Really. So will we say that Earth, Wind, and Fire? They were narcissists because they they said they made the song "You're a Shining Star, No Matter Who You Are," like shining bright to see. You know, like you know, like is that narcissism? Like, so to go back to Daisha's question, I think that's part of the issue. Like people focus on like one aspect of it, or like they drill in on that they're arrogant, so they must be narcissistic, or they uh, manipulate my all these situations so they got to be narcissistic so as opposed to it being having to be all five or at least five out of the entire amount they focus on one aspect exactly. of being a shining star and <laughs> therefore because they said this that and the third then they have to be narcissistic as opposed to what it actually uh entails right and i mean just say that the person is arrogant just say that the person is selfish I think the issue is that a lot of people want to, I'm just saying, a lot of people want to sound smart. Mm -hmm. And so they learn a big word and then they're like, this is what you are. I just saw this on Google. And this is what you like, come on, man. If you don't truly understand what this thing is, then don't misuse it. Because that can be harmful to someone. And to Justin's point, I think that a lot of people, yes, they do have narcissistic qualities, Mm -hmm. but they're not necessarily a narcissist. Like some people are very entitled. Some people do exploit (laughs) their relationships. They can be very manipulative. Yeah. And there are definitely some arrogant people out there. But when you start to have like a chunk of these symptoms, that's when it's like, ooh, okay, let me let me distance myself from you. Right. And there are narcissistic individuals out here. Yes, there yeah, are. Exactly. But let them be diagnosed properly. <laughs> I think people also try and use that word, um, Desha, because they like 
they like to put in the finding excuse, you know, as well. It's like mm-hmm. finding excuse. I, I like to notes on this and everything when y'all send me. Y'all, I'm like <laughs> reading through my notes. Like, and um, just like a reason to not be held accountable for their actions and things. Like sometimes that narcissist, that person that's being quote unquote narcissistic, is somebody that's like trying to tell them, hey, there's this is a better way of doing things, or hey, um, this is our relationship. I'm not with this, or I'm not with that. And like because they're trying to make boundaries or guidelines. Oh, you're trying to be narcissistic. You're being narcissistic. And like you said, just using the word wrong. Just all around, that's not being narcissistic. That's called your partner saying, I don't like this. Or your partner saying, hey, these are the rules. This is what we established. Let's leave it at that. And then um, it's also like you to not somebody's confidence. Like that person may be somebody who's just bold, bright, shining, like we said, like the shining star. And then all of a sudden you're trying to say they're a narcissist because they are confident in themselves. Like maybe it's not an arrogance, but it is just a, a, a feeling of confidence. And now that person's trying to bash that person. So again, I'm just I'm on totally in green and agreeance with you on that one. Like the last part that you said, Carlton, about the confidence thing. Now I will admit, I I can appreciate confidence. I can't stay in confidence. I cannot stay in mm-hmm. confidence because I feel yeah. like if you are truly confident, you don't have to scream to the mountaintops mm-hmm. how great you are. You just exist. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. you just exist and that's what it is. So I guess so I'll say I've heard I've heard I've, I've heard men you try and use this for um use the narcissist word for on women and they usually try and say that for a woman who's just like really out of their league, basically in a sense. Okay. Like that's that's really what that's really where it comes where that example was coming from. Like um a guy who's you with that girl who's just that girl and got the thousand got the thousands of followers and whatever, but he somehow Broke her in, and then, like you know, things don't go their way. You know, attitudes, whatever, the whoop, whoop. And then now he's like, "Oh, that girl is a narcissist, or such and such." But like I said, just trying to bash on the confidence. Like, um, I might have run into people at times, but to be a narcissist, that's like a, a full time job. Like, to have five of those qualities and to constantly do all of that stuff, like you're gonna know if somebody's actually a narcissist. Like, you're gonna know, like, hey, look, like, this person, like, they was all extreme. It's not just oh, they were over confident with themselves or. All they always talk down to me. It's like they're gonna be doing all of that stuff all at once, and it's always gonna be constantly happening. So, yeah, that's that's like a full time job to do. Yeah, all you that. gonna be receiving that. So, if you're exhausted dealing with this person, then they might not be narcissistic. You'd be surprised though. Some people get off on that, all that craziness going on that lot. I'm so serious. It's not healthy, but some people feed right into <laughs> all of that. Well, some people only know how to exist in chaos. Mm. It's not necessarily that they like get off on it, but like you ever seen somebody? I don't want to come at you, Fred, but you sort of described it. Like you ever seen <laughs> be bored in a relationship because it's healthy? It's like they want drama because you said earlier, like you will have somebody that you clearly like. They like you back, but you're like, mm, I want the challenge. <laughs> and so you, go- <laughs> so you go for the person that is like. This is gonna be an uphill battle, but you know what? It's gonna be fun. It's like, <laughs> should I do this to myself? So I think that's what it is. You just get used to functioning in chaos. Again, Blueface and Krishan, they both have gone through a lot of traumatic things in their childhood. And clearly they've had they have formed some form of trauma bond, clearly. So the last trend relationship-wise that I've seen a lot on social media from these uh, coaches and things like that is you need to operate in your feminine energy. Um, or the men saying, you're not, you're not masking enough. That's why she acting like that. So what does that look like? That was a good voice. Yeah. You, what is it, dude? <laughs> what does that look like to operate in your feminine or masculine energy? What, what does that even mean? What does that look like to you? I'd have to be comfortable with the other person. Uh, and when I say comfortable, I'm not just talking about, oh, I'm sitting right beside them and this is cool. I'm talking about being vulnerable enough to tell them what's really on my mind at all times. Like if I feel like the need, like it's on my mind, I can just talk about it. Like be willing to be able to do that. Now people may say, oh, I need this person to do this, that, and the third in order for me to open up like that. Some people have also had, you know, bad experiences possibly opening up in general, and they call themselves closing themselves off to whomever may come after people. But me personally, if I feel as if though like a person's listening to me, like when I talk and I'm communicating about what I got going on, uh, mm-hmm. then it allows for me to feel more comfortable with them. And usually when they feel me become more comfortable, it allows 
for whomever I'm dealing with of the opposite sex to become more, you know, comfortable in their femininity. So you think that you only can show feminine or masculine energy based on someone else's actions? Because <clears throat> to me, everybody has both feminine and masculine mm -hmm. energy that shows itself depending on whatever it is that you're doing. I don't think that it's dependent on whether or not you're in a romantic relationship. But that, I mean, that's just me. But even in these relationships, do both not show? Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like you're, everyone has it regardless right. of gender. So it's going to show in every situation. I think you can definitely, I mean, everybody does have both, but I think like your partner can help bring out some things more. Um, just like how just you talk about like with the cooking and stuff, like a lot of people look at it as more of a feminine thing, but you know, if you come home, you're like, Hey, you know, what? I decided to cook dinner. It's like, you could be operating like that person's bringing out that, you know, that kind of like that feminine side of you a little bit, or like, you know, just like those qualities or, um, like how people talk about like, you know, like a woman standing up for her man, you know, she's like, you know, bringing out some of that aggression and kind of like letting things flow that, you know, probably would come from maybe a man a little bit more. So, I mean, I think a partner can help bring it out or increase and they can also do the reverse as well. So um, just kind of like it's on my own. So um, I saw a video one time that was saying that, um, I guess with society now, like single moms, like because they have to wear like two hats, they have to operate, you know, from like a masculine side a lot more. And over time that kind of like decreases her feminine side. And like, it just kind of like, just starts to drive guys away because I guess like she's that much more arrogant or not arrogant, but like, she's just that much more masculine. It's like, I'm a man and you're like, kind of like giving off this energy. That's kind of like a turn off to me. So, I mean, I don't know how true like that may be, or like if that's actually an actual thing, but that was just something that came to my mind when you were um, talking about that. I think that uh, relationship wise, I do operate like mentally wise. Like more in the masculine sense, like I'm not going to be overly emotional. I'm not going to be overly dramatic. Um, but I do. It's like the third time I feel like I said this. Uh, <laughs> but I do. Um, so that means like when I'm in relationships, you're not getting this emotional side of me. Um, but when I'm done with it, it's so much easier for me to like dismiss. It. It's not a whole bunch of like crying over it or, oh, maybe I should like go back to this person or anything along those lines. Um, and I guess that could like be a hindrance if like you with someone who wants that type of communication. Um, and this could be like, yo, maybe this is the person that's supposed to be your forever after, but you don't know because you're not opening up. So I could see how operating in masculinity over femininity in certain situations uh, could block relationship status. My thoughts on it are pretty simple on um, just because I kind of was brought up on the two roles for. Like I said, like this goes back again to like my red, me, my upbringing. Like the role of a woman is to be a nurturer, and the, what men have a have a confusion with is they think um, men think that they are supposed to be protectors and things like that. But our real role is supposed to we're supposed to be problem solvers, and so and so I think I've mentioned this on an episode before. Like you know, as a man, we're supposed to be the problem solver. So if if our if our woman has a tire blown out, we're supposed to know how to change the tire and fix that. You know, if a situation arises where danger occurs, we're supposed to we're supposed to know how to how to how to solve that problem. Now, what I want to bring it up to now to today's modern society is where it comes into like instant gratification, where people are so wanting it to happen now. And so, what happens nowadays is that um, most um, men are are trying to operate in their masculine energy and solve a problem, maybe trying to solve a problem in their dating life or something like that. And people want that instant change there. And not willing to wait like the solution can have already been brought to the table but just because it doesn't happen today um it's not looked at let's say you're you're solving the problem that's at hand and so but we got we as men have to get back to the whole to the whole idea of being problem solvers man instead of um of being problem solving that is the true masculine energy um because if you're able to solve a woman's problem she's almost forever grateful like just I mean, I don't, I don't want to. So she disagree. can solve her own problems. Is she operating in masculine energy? But that's where it goes into what you and Fred were talking about there. That's where that callus comes. That's where that callus is built on the feminine energy that contains that feminine energy because it, because that's operating on the logical side of the male side. Women operate operate on the emotional side, and men operate on the logical side. And so if she's operating on that logical side, twenty three hours out of twenty three hours out of twenty four hours of the day, 
you know, then, hey, you're starting to put that callus on, hey, I don't need to be thinking about my emotions because your emotions are not going to make you make an illogical choice or an illogical decision. And so now I'm thinking logically all the time. I'm thinking just like this man, how is this man going to provide for these kids? That's what that woman is, that single mom is thinking, you know, how am I going to get to work and then pick my kids up from school? That's what that single mom is thinking. And that's what that dad will be thinking. But again, it's putting that callus on the feminine and it makes it hard for it to get out because they're like, hey, I got to think logically all the time instead of you thinking with being emotional, being soft, being the nurturer. Sometimes I think we confuse being a functioning adult to masculine energy. To me, I, I agree with what you're saying overall or what y'all are saying overall, but like certain things, if if a woman is not in a relationship with a man, is she not supposed to get certain things done? Is she supposed to then reach out to a friend or somebody? Like, I don't know. I feel like when you're single or you're used to being single, then you're used to solving your own issues and having your own back. Go ahead. Modern world, modern world things. That's the modern, that's the modern, that's today. Like back in, back in those times, you know, the daughters, back in, in older times, like the daughters would stay, their fathers provided them and wedded them off to the kings and the most wealthy man in the town and all kinds of things of that sort. So now, so it's like the woman has, the modern woman has become the working woman and things of that sort. So yeah, it's like y'all are all adulting now, but in previous times before, you know, y'all were taken care of, like y'all were in the home, even if daddy had to take care of you until you were 40 and gone, like, like, it was, that's what was happening. So that's the, the, those are just changes in the time. I understand that, but also you have to shift with the time. And we're living yeah, in a time right, now yeah. where we are not making enough, like, y'all are not making enough money, most of y'all, to take care of a family. No one is. Yeah, so it's not the same for five yeah, jobs. Yeah, you need, you need a partnership versus um this person is now coming into my life to do everything for me but yeah no i understand what you're saying justin you had something yeah all i was saying is times have changed that's why when i hear you know don't get me wrong a lot of older folks have great wisdom but don't say back in your day because now nowadays these prices ain't like how i've been back in your day right. please believe like, come on now, like minimum wage was <laughs> 725 back in your day guess what it is now the same thing and the prices went up. It don't make no sense. Come on, dog. Hey, that's what be killing me. <laughs> I'll be like, dog, y'all don't understand. And y'all be like, man, back in my day, we used to do this. I'm, I said, okay, cool, whatever. But I understand. Respect. But please, I'm going through this right now. You done got your money. If you done put your years in, you know, bless your heart. But we're going to deal with this. I had to get that off my chest. That's been random. That's been on my mind. something else that was in my notes, too. <laughs> like, you know, like, we also own... Um, we're the only community that has this talk, like, you know, like if you look at anywhere, any other of our, our international, um, the rest of the world, they don't have this talk in their community. Like the Asian woman is doing what she got to do to make her man happy. The Asian man doing what he got to do to make his woman happy and et cetera and et cetera and et cetera. So it's, um, I feel like as much as they try and imitate what we have going on, like with our physical characteristics and our hair and all kinds of and the way we talk and our music and everything like that, that we need to start looking at maybe at the way that they're running their relationships, doing their relationships because, um, like I said, this whole manosphere and, and romantic sphere that's going on on YouTube and stuff like that, they don't have that. They don't. That's they don't have it as, as, as prevalent as we as we do. Man, they really don't. I mean, I think I agree. I think it starts with this. I think it starts with having honest conversations that aren't disrespectful. Because usually, and it's both ways, like I'll see girls going off, but then there's no resolve. And I'll see guys going off and there's no resolve. So I think having honest conversations and people kind of taking a step back to look at what can I do better <laughs> so that um, either I can attract what I want or I can create a, a healthier relationship where I already am. I think it's, oh. oh, my bad. Go ahead, Raquel. I'm sorry. Well, if we're looking for, like, resolve type thing, I don't think that we eat, no one should operate in just their feminine or just their masculine energy. Like Carlton mentioned, like, the woman is supposed to be the nurturer, but if you are my child's father, I want you to nurture him, too. Um, if you're not around, I am going to problem solve. I am going to protect. So, like, you, I don't think no one should be operating in just one of them, one of these energies. Like they have to overlap in order for any actual relationship to like truly work. 
So <laughs> let us know below, what are your thoughts on everything that we talked about today? Thank you, Raquel, Carlton, and Fred for joining us for this conversation. Um, before we go, thank you to all of you who have subscribed. We are officially at 1,000 subscribers, over 5,000 hours watched on our page, and our page has been viewed over 20,000 times. Yes, yeah, no doubt. No thank doubt. you, thank you, Justin. Shout out to Ma shout out to Mikael. He was the 1,000 subscriber, <laughs> and shout out to everybody, everybody else that is subscribed. We appreciate you. We got some some good stuff coming on the way. This episode was a banger. And please believe, stay tuned. Yes, I have been Daisha D. And I've been Jay Stan. Join us every other Friday at noon. And always remember to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>